at Pacific Coast Metal Craft Shop. We're already well underway dissecting this boat. We've got the deck all up, doing the demo work to get the uh, framing for the deck welded in. And just having a hell of a time here. This is fun. So we're just ripping out that front section there so that we can run because it's a little bit higher than where we want the deck level. And then we're going to run a nice flush deck all the way up to that front bulkhead. So we're just getting everything out of the way. And we can start melting some aluminum. Jake is using the pipe bender here to bend the, the corners and the radiuses that are going to, with a bow rail that's going to follow the front shape of the boat and come up. So, it's tricky work because you kind of got to, you know, use some math and angle finding, but then you also got to do a lot of it by feel, right? Just get that arch and that radius just right. Total boat sent me out this flotation foam. Never used this stuff before, but I want to fill in the cavities in the boat, so Let's see what's involved here. I think it's just like a two part kind of like an epoxy thing. All right, you mix the two together in a pail, stir them up real well, and uh, pour it in the hole. Eight cubic feet of foam. The mixing window for this product is short. Therefore, with larger quantities, a drill mixer may be helpful. Don't have one of those. Thought about getting one today. Should have got one. Didn't. Okay, so. I am in a fabricator shop, though. I could probably just make something. Um... Okay, so it says, keep a cup of acetone on hand to place the mixer mandrel in to immediately after mixing, be ready to work quickly. Mix foam components together, one part of resin, part A, and one part activator, part B, for approximately 25 seconds. 
That's not very long. There should be no visible swirls in the cup when mixing is complete. Rising begins almost immediately and is dramatic. Ooh, that's fun. Sounds fun. <laughs> dramatic rising. I don't think I've ever read the word dramatic in a direction label before. That's, that's just fun. Polythyrethane foam has roughly 400 seconds of rise time, just under seven minutes before the reaction is complete. So there are no second chances. Oh, this is getting better and better. <clears throat> Once mixing begins, there's no going back. The point of no return. The reaction is a thermal reaction which generates heat. Ooh, even more exciting. And since this heat is momentary, it poses no problem for polyester, red epoxy, diamond materials, polymer. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just start with maybe like a half batch. I've got these these mixing pails here. Right? Two and a half quart. They've got measurements on them. So yeah, I think I might do just a, a one liter of each, right? One liter, two liter, because I don't work in quarts like you special needs Americans. So yeah, let's do it. So as much as the better half of me, I think it's the better half, is, is saying, you know, do it in small batches. Like, hey, we've got some, it's a pretty big void to fill here. So, yeah, the samurai is a warrior and living dangerously is just how they live. So, we'll go with the full, full gal mix here, here because I found so conveniently in my, uh, my friend John's shop here, Pacific Coast Metal Craft, and there's a mixing wand. It's just sitting by the door like it was left there for me. So I'm, I'm assuming it was left there for me. And uh, I got some acetone here, which is also I just found right on the floor where I was working. So I assumed that it was left there for me as well. So I'm gonna use that to clean my, my mixer. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Woo. That'll wake you up in the morning or put you to sleep forever. Everybody, I would assume, realized that was a joke. Don't drink acetone, okay? You dumb shits. It's the day and age we live in. They gotta freaking war people, not to be idiots. Okay, I'm just gonna vacuum out this little area here. Okay, so we mix the two parts, we, we stir for 25 seconds, and then we pour. I think I'm gonna pour half and half, just in case my volume, my idea of volume is way off, because I don't think, there, there might not be eight cubic feet. One, two, three, four, five, I think it's close. We'll see, famous last. I just wanted to send a big thank you to Total Boat for sending me this expanding flotation foam. If you guys want to add a little peace of mind to your boat build or use this foam for myriad other uses, please click the link in the description box below to check out Total Boat products. All right, so that's pretty cool. Like that all just happened in five minutes. I tried to like, trowel it not a good idea um yeah it's tricky because it doesn't just rise like like a level fluid it kind of balloons which is you know so like spots like that are up high and then we've still got low spots and i'll have to trim that off and 
Same over here, trim that back a little bit, which I kind of expected. So I don't know how much more I want to put in, maybe just a little bit down in there to fill that void and a little bit there. Maybe just mix like one liter to try and get more of a level thing. So I don't want to spend all day like trying to cut it off, right? I was hoping I could just get it to rise and like maybe stop a couple inches short of flush, right? But she's a little proud in some spots, no big deal. My only, my only concern is, uh, but I won't know until I try tomorrow, is we got to weld a plate on top of this. And I, I, so there's only going to be a, like, you know, the heat of the welder around the edges, but you know, it might melt some of the foam. I don't, it can't really start a fire cause we'll be enclosing it. And so there won't be any air getting in underneath there. Uh, once the plate is on top, right. But you know, it might melt some of the foam around the edge. We'll never really know. Cause once it's welded in there, it's going to stay in there. So I don't think it'll be a big issue. Um, but it's definitely given me some peace of mind knowing that I have these voids filled with foam. They can never take on water. This, this is closed cell foam, like 95% closed cell, so it can't absorb water. Um, and, you know, if there is a small crack in the weld, water can't seep into that cavity because it's full of closed cell foam. So that's awesome. And um, I now I want to do the same thing on these cavities right here. So that, that void there, that runs along the length of the boat, that's six inch by I don't know, approximately two feet high shelf, runs on that side and on that side too, you can see. So I'm gonna drill a hole um, I was hoping I could pour pour it in and then it would just kind of level down the trough, which it, it kind of does for the first 20 seconds. It, you know, it's very liquid, but then it immediately starts to balloon, right? So I think I might have to drill maybe four, four holes and then, and then pour it in in four different locations, right? Or else one is just going to fill up and then the hole the hole will close so i gotta do a little bit of uh choreography with uh, filling those side voids and then i also have uh there's two chambers in the back there so that that is an air chamber have to be sure not to call it a ballast chamber because i got scolded by all sorts of semen in the comment section, um, it's not a ballast, it's a buoyancy chamber or an air chamber. I'll just call it that. I don't know if I can, I won't get canceled for that. So that goes, and it goes underneath the, the engine little bump out there. So that whole thing is full. And I've got a little drain at the bottom, so I think there might be some water in there. I've got to drain it out and then fill that one as well. Trying to think where the best place to fill it from would be, like pour. I don't really want to drill a hole on top. And I don't really have a funnel, so I don't know. Might just drill a hole in the side, like with a hole saw, like a three inch hole. And then just create like a little aluminum sheet metal trough and then just pour it in that way on either side. Right, so I don't know if you're catching that in the time lapse, but I should have poured from both ends because we got a little rendy here with the foam. I, I, uh, I, cr I cranked the boat up to try and lift the front end so that it would have slope towards the back. But, you know, it only stays liquid for like 
30 seconds and I was hoping it would you know pour to the back and then start to expand and uh, I did so I just went ahead and put in two gallons of mixed two batches and I just turned around like after like 30 seconds thinking like oh yeah it's gonna fill expand that up you know nicely and I realized that as soon as it filled up to the to the opening it created air pressure because I didn't have a hole cut at the back of one of the chambers. So then it all just started oozing out like lava here, right? So I quickly went and cut another chamber at the, at the back there. So hopefully it's, it's expanding that way a little bit now. Um, I cut two chambers in this one. I poured one batch in and it, and it just came up to flush. And I don't know if I can, uh, coming down to the end here, can't see any foam coming out there unless I put a flashlight in there. So I think I'm gonna mix another maybe like a half batch and pour it in here to fill the, the rest of that. And because the two batches in this one, I don't know if you can see it, but the foam is like right there. So it filled, you know, a good amount of it because it's super narrow down at the bottom. It's only like two inches wide, right? Like triangular shaped. So I think I might've misjudged the volume of that cavity. It's long, but it's super narrow. It's only six inches wide, right? So eight cubic feet fills that up really quickly, especially when you put 16 cubic feet of expanded foam in there. So that's fun though. It's like science class. Chemistry. Lame. <laughs> See if that was a good mix. Looks like Bailey's.
Bailey's milkshake. Mm. Have a sip. <laughs> All right, let's go mix another batch to the other side. Rest of this back in that other hole over here. Of bread rising up. Just remembered that the uh, that maple tree that I took down was actually still green. It was up on the build site there, and it fell down. I, I cut it down the gully. This one here was the one that's been standing dead for a while, but obviously still standing. So that's where my dry firewood is. So I gotta buck that one down here.
Let's go! Come on. He's going. But I kind of notched well. He's leaning into that tree. Son of a bee. The tree is a son of a bee. wants to. She does. <sighs> She's just hung up in that stupid canopy of the other tree. And that right there is not the safest way to do it. This one is way drier than the other one, so it should be good. Just gonna haul it over to the cabin there, fuck it up, split it up. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a minute to thank some of my favorite brands and companies who have partnered with us on this wild journey. Without their support, this channel would not be possible. So I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Odie's Oil, U2 Fasteners, Granberg International, and Princess Auto for becoming official sponsors of the Samurai Carpenter YouTube channel. I encourage you guys to send some love back to them and check out all that they have to offer. To do that, just click the links in the description box below.
Here I am in the Hall of Giants. Monster trees here. All I can hear is the snow falling. <clears throat> I think it was Nietzsche who said, you know, you're not a free man unless you have two thirds of your day or more to do what you will. And I gotta say, it feels good to be a free man. To wake up and just say, hey, I'm gonna go see if I can find a deer. You know, so many of us are cussing and swearing and shoveling our driveways so we can get to work instead of being able to just enjoy the blessing of the snowfall. It's so beautiful. If you're not a free man, maybe make a plan to become one one day. And I know it's easier said than done, but I'm really not that smart, guys. If you believe you can, you will. And I'll say it's worth the effort for sure.